You may have noted that some people get sick more often than others. When an infectious disease is doing the rounds of your locality, there are some who remain healthy while others take ill too soon. Also, even though our body is attacked every day by several infectious agents, we do not succumb to every agent. Why is that? The answer lies in the immunity of our bodies, which varies from individual to individual. Immunity is the overall ability of a host to fight the disease-causing organisms. Immunity is of two types, innate and acquired. Innate immunity is something we all possess since birth. It is a non-specific kind of defense, which provides different types of barriers to the entry of foreign agents to our body. Four different types of barriers are provided by innate immunity. Physical barriers, physiological barriers, cellular barriers, and cytokine barriers. The skin on our body is the main physical barrier to the entry of microbes. The mucus coatings of the epithelial lining of the respiratory, gastrointestinal and urogenital tracts inside the body are also physical barriers to microbes as they trap them. Saliva in the mouth Hydrochloric acid inside the stomach, as well as tears in the eyes, act as physiological barriers to microbial invasion. Our body also has certain types of leukocytes or white blood cells or WBCs, such as monocytes, natural killer lymphocytes, and polymorphonuclear leukocytes also known as PMNL neutrophils, in the blood. Together, they constitute a cellular barrier, along with macrophages in the tissues. They can also destroy microbes. Some virus-infected cells release proteins called interferons that prevent the spread of infection in the body thereby acting as cytokine barriers in the body. On the other hand, acquired immunity is pathogen specific. It depends on the body's memory. For example, when a body encounters a bacterium for the first time, it produces a low intensity response called a primary immune response and produces memory cells. However, when the same bacterium attacks again, the memory cells help to elicit a secondary immune response of high intensity. This response is also known as an anamnestic response. Both primary and secondary immune responses are made possible by two special lymphocytes in our blood, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes respectively. B lymphocytes produce proteins to fight pathogens, whereas T lymphocytes help B cells to perform this task. The protective proteins produced by B cells are called antibodies. Each antibody molecule has four peptide chains, two small and two longer ones. The two small chains are called light chains, while the two longer ones are called heavy chains. Therefore, an antibody is represented by H2L2, IgA, IgM, IgE and IgG are some examples of antibodies in our body. Acquired immunity or the acquired immune response is primarily of two types, a humoral immune response and a cell-mediated immunity or CMI. 
it is the humoral immune response that is carried out by antibodies. Since antibodies are found in blood, it is called the humoral immune response. The word humoral refers to blood or any other body fluid. The cell mediated immune response can be best understood with the example of an organ transplant. When organs like the eye, heart, kidney or liver fail, organ transplant is the only remedy. Thus begins the search for a suitable healthy donor for transplantation. This is important because grafts or transplants cannot be made from just about any source as the body will reject those grafts sooner or later. To find a perfect match, tissue matching and blood group matching are conducted before a transplant. This ability of the body to differentiate between self and non-self while rejecting grafts is the cell mediated immune response. It is an immune response that doesn't involve antibodies, but it involves the activation of macrophages, natural killer cells or NK, antigen-specific cytotoxic T lymphocytes, and the release of various cytokines that fight antigens. Patients who have had organ transplants have to take immune suppressants all their lives to inhibit their body's immune response against the transplant. Then again, based on whether the antibodies are produced inside or outside the body, immunity can be distinguished as active immunity or passive immunity. When the body is exposed to antigens such as living or dead microbes or other proteins, it produces antibodies in response. This type of immunity is called active immunity, which is slow and takes time to reach its full effective response. When microbes gain access to the body during a natural infection, active immunity is induced. Consequently, the underlying principle of any immunization plan is active immunity where it is induced by deliberately injecting microbes into the body. On the other hand, passive immunity comes into play when ready-made antibodies are delivered directly into the body from external sources to protect it against foreign agents. The antibody that a fetus receives from its mother through the placenta during pregnancy is an example of passive immunity. Likewise, during the initial days of lactation, mother's milk contains a yellowish fluid called colostrum that has copious amounts of the antibody IgA. Therefore, mother's milk also provides passive immunity to babies. Did you know that even though passive immunity provides immediate protection to the body against pathogens, the body doesn't develop any memory of the pathogen. This means that the body is at risk of being attacked by the same pathogen when infected by it later. Therefore, immunity can be innate or acquired. It can also be either active if induced by an infection or a microbial attack or passive if provided with ready-made antibodies.